Supervisory Deputy U.S. Marshal Arliss Cutter and his partner, Deputy Lola Taoriki, sat in the early morning darkness listening to the bark of a distant dog and tick of the slate-gray government-issue Chevy Tahoe as it cooled under the patter of a steady rain. A running engine would have given away their position. There was a hierarchy to the hunting of men. Some of the rules were spoken. Some were understood instinctively by those who did the hunting. Crimes against persons trumped property offenses. Fraudsters and embezzlers were hunted in the margins when time allowed, often by newer deputy marshals still learning the ropes. Violent felons rose to the top of the stack and went to the real man-hunters, deputies with former law enforcement experience or just a particular acumen for the job. Fugitives like Kevin Edward Dupree, wanted for crimes against children, earned a scrutiny akin to the light of a thousand suns. Ordinarily, Cutter wouldn't have bothered kidding up for a surveillance. But this morning, the Alaska Fugitive Task Force was dressed in full battle rattle, ballistic vests with trauma plates over their hearts and lungs, oblong pouches with individual first aid kits, and M4 carbines. A green Kevlar helmet sat on the floorboard between his leather boots. An arrest was imminent, and Eddie Dupree had a lot to lose. Information from the Thornton brothers had given them Dupree's latest burner phone. The number had gone active around five in the morning three times over the last seven days, pinging in or around the Holiday Gas Station and Convenience Store at Boniface Parkway and DeBar Road in Midtown Anchorage. Two visits could have been a fluke. Three was a pattern, and patterns were a man-hunter's friend. Patterns got people caught.